Why is he still in the league, you might ask? He was the number three overall draft pick. If this guy was drafted in the third or fourth round, he would be in the CFL or he'd be working at a fucking McDonald's. The guy is absolutely abhorrent. He has no traits of a quarterback that should be playing in any professional league. And the fact, you combine the fact that he is, has average athletic traits and can't read coverage, it's just a disaster. It's like you'd rather have Nathan Peterman as your starting quarterback, because at least with Nathan Peterman, you know what the fuck you're getting. Trey Lance is arguably the biggest bust of at least the last 15 years in, you know, the history of the National Football League, and it's very safe to say and conclude at this point that the 49ers investing all that draft capital and trading up to the number three overall pick um, to select Lance um, was an epic failure, and to say it didn't work out would just, you know, not do the situation justice whatsoever. And you saw the title of this video. I believe in my honest opinion here that Trey Lance is the biggest failure in NFL history. And there's part of it that is his fault and there's part of it that he couldn't control. He couldn't control it. The 49ers wanted to trade up to the third overall pick and select him with that draft choice. They could have went with anybody else. They could have went with Justin Fields. They could have went with Mac Jones. They could have went with any other fucking player in that draft class, but they chose Trey Lance because they thought he'd be um, an elite NFL quarterback in the future. And everyone was seeing him as, you know, as, as some raw, young, and super talented prospect that has potential to be a special player um, in the NFL at the quarterback position. But obviously, we're a few years into Lance's career, and it has not shaped up you know, the way that a lot of people anticipated it to be. Now, I think the number one flaw that now everyone looks back on you know, in hindsight is the guy um, just didn't have what it took to play. And what I mean by that is reading coverage. Can he read defense? Does he go through his reads? Um, can he learn and master a system in a year or two? And he had multiple years under Shanahan's system, which is, you know, if Brock Purdy can run it, no offense to Brock Purdy, he's a, one of the game's best quarterbacks, but if Brock Purdy can learn it in his first year and master it in a little under a year, then Trey Lance should have been a god. If he was as good as advertised, he should have been a god at running the scheme, and he should be in the MVP talks. But we're here talking about how he's a bum and he's a failure, so obviously it didn't work out that way. He can't read defense. He doesn't know where the defense is going to be. The guy can't fucking read coverage. He can't move safeties or linebackers or anybody, matter of fact, with his eyes. He can't make throws with timing and anticipation in the windows with touch or with velocity. He doesn't know what to throw over the middle. He's not confident. His poise in, in, in the pocket is just fucking terrible. He, you know, is absolutely ass under pressure. And looking back on his career at North Dakota State University, he played bum teams. He played some of the worst competition in the nation. He played fucking FCS schools. And FCS schools tend to not produce, you know, any, if, you know, at all, barely any, um, talent at the NFL level. There's, you know, there's a really big gap between FBS um, power school competition and these FCS teams that obviously don't recruit at, at you know, a high rate um, like most of the schools in the FBS, even the some of the worst, you know, FBS schools at recruiting, you know, out talent the some of the, you know, mid-tier or better FCS schools. Yes, most of the, the top 10 or top 15 in the country FCS schools could probably whoop on the worst FBS team. Like if you put Akron against North Dakota State, North Dakota State is going to obliterate them probably by 50, 60 points. But playing against Central Arkansas and like Nickel State and Norfolk State, that's not fucking competition. Those guys have never produced an NFL player. And that was the competition that Lance was going up against a lot, most of, if not all the time at the FCS level. He was basically doing, you know, good against cream puff competition. And a lot of people would say, oh, well, he didn't throw an interception. He showed that he was smart. He showed he was smart against glorified high school players, which is not hard to do. You could, you could put, I mean, anyone, you could have put Zach Wilson in the FCS and he would have thrown 100 touchdowns in a fucking year. He would have thrown 100 touchdowns, he might have thrown like 10 picks, but he would have thrown 100 touchdowns and people would be calling Zach Wilson generational. That's how it would have been. Trey Lance beat up on bum fucking players. And when you look back on it, that's just how it is. That's the truth of the situation. And the 49ers gambled with their damn life and it got taken away from them.
this is what happens when you don't do you know your your due diligence to do a scouting report or evaluate a prospect correctly based on the level of talent and competition they faced in the collegiate football ranks he played bum teams with no fucking talent on them at the nfl level or at the professional level whatsoever and they said that oh well we, th we think we could turn this guy into you know an elite starter in a couple of years in the nfl if he masters our system and you know his you know the level of competition and talent he played against doesn't really factor in our decision um nor do we really care about it which is the fucking first problem why they shouldn't have selected the guy he played against shit talent so why he selected this high i don't fucking understand and I didn't have an opinion on Trey Lance. I'm not going to say, oh, I knew he would suck. I did not have any opinion on Trey Lance whatsoever. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you're, you're, you're a hindsight warrior. You're saying in hindsight this, that. You didn't know. Well, there's a lot of fucking people that knew that Trey Lance were, were, was going to be a colossal bust. And level of competition is just the first thing. Number one, he has the most average arm in the world. A lot of people are saying, oh, he's got a rocket arm. For FCS, he has a rocket arm, right? He would have about an average, um, you know, d regular Division One FBS arm. He had a bazooka arm for an FCS fucking quarterback, all right? And he had average, you know, mobility. Well, he had elite mobility for an FCS quarterback. Um, but people overrated his athletic skills, overrated his arm talent, overrated the velocity he can put on the football and his improvisation because he was playing against talent that was vastly inferior to the FBS schools. And... When you looked at the film, you break it down, he wasn't fucking reading coverage, and it was just, it was sad to fucking see. The game against Central Arkansas um, in 2020, the COVID year, it should have tanked his draft stock. He should have, the, 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 every scout who knew what they were looking at should have been, okay, yeah, fifth, sixth round, maybe we'll take a flyer on him. He could be like a scout team arm or something. But no, he's no scout team arm. He's still employed in the NFL, which is a fucking crime against the NFL because this guy couldn't learn a Shanahan offense. When you can't learn a Shanahan offense, you're fucked. For as much flack as I give the guy, he's a pretty good offensive fucking head coach, all right? He knows what the fuck he's doing offensively. His scheme is absolutely genius, and it gets, you know, the athletes into open space um, to make plays, and, you know, there's a lot of timing and anticipation in it. And Trey Lance can't throw with anticipation or timing or with touch. He has one type of throw. He has to throw it as fast as he can, and he can't throw it with timing or with anticipation. He has that, that one throw. He had that one throw going for him where he threw it fucking far down the field, and people were like, oh, my God, holy fuck, this guy's going to be a great quarterback. He's going to be really raw coming in the league. Yeah, he's going to be really raw coming in the league because the motherfucker sucks, and he played against nobody. And when, when he made his first couple starts, it looked like he had played against nobody up to that point because under competition, he looked like a piece of shit. He has like a, what, an under, I know, oh, he only started four games. Well, first of all, in every four game, he looked like a bum. He looked like a fucking garbage quarterback because he wasn't reading the field. He wasn't processing the defense. He would get the, the ball swat at the line. He would make one read and start running. He would get ample amount of time to throw in the, in the pocket. Um, and he would constantly make a blunderous decision after blunderous decision. He would air mail throws. He would lock in the players. He would, you know, showcase a lack of awareness, you know, in the pocket and show limited to no pocket presence. And when you look back at, at, on his uh, All-22 film with the 49ers, the guy is a walking fucking tragedy of a quarterback. This is a guy who should be playing tight end. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say, wow, that's, that's, that's shocking, a shocking remark for me, Mr. True. But this is really a guy who should be playing tight end because... He is okay athletically, and tight ends don't require freak athleticism. I think Trey Lance would be an average athleticism tight end. And he has a great frame. I mean, he has some muscle on his frame. So I think he probably should be relatively strong. So you move him to tight end. Um, kid, go get some gloves. Go wear, like, fucking, go wear, like, I don't know, a tight end number. Like, go wear, like, 89 or something. And go out there and be and maybe block, maybe block someone, or maybe run out for a route, or maybe do a chip and go, or run in the flats, try to get some, you know, try to make a plain space with the football in your hands. He's not a quarterback because he can't fucking read a defense or he can't throw under pressure. So why the fuck is he still in the league? Why is he still in the league, you might ask? He was the number three overall draft pick. If this guy was drafted in the third or fourth round, he would be in the CFL or be working at a fucking McDonald's. The guy is absolutely abhorrent. He ha has no traits of a quarterback that should be playing in any professional league. And the fact, you combine the fact that he is, has average athletic traits and can't read coverage, it's just a disaster. It's like you'd rather have Nathan Peterman as your starting quarterback, because at least with Nathan Peterman, you know what the fuck you're getting. With Trey Lance, you're getting just, you don't know what you're getting. That's the problem. And a lot of people would attribute that to, oh, he hasn't started much. But 
if he couldn't master Shanahan offense in the, the like the three years he was given with that goddamn franchise, he's not gonna master any offense ever, and he's never gonna be good. It's as simple as that, folks. I don't make the fucking rules. Trey Lance is a bomb, and he's the biggest failure in the history of the National Football League at quarterback. Because he was drafted so high, had so much, you know, high hopes and expectations for his career being a potential Hall of Fame one. And it never worked out because people didn't see the red flags um, before he was drafted and immediately after he was drafted. Thank you all for watching. This has been Mr. Truth, and this was nothing but the truth.